What's up parents and future parents? It's time for a Little Human Gear Review. Something that most parents are gonna buy is gonna be a baby monitor. I decided to look at video baby monitors because I like the aspect of being able to hear my baby girl and also see her. I actually was looking at one originally and then when I got it and I started messing with it, it had some issues. It had some major connectivity issues, which I'm going to go over. And I decided to order some more and kind of compare and contrast the pros and minuses of them. So I hope this helps you out. This is the first one that I got. This is the Laputa. This one is $89.99. This one's by Bei Shiju. Um, pretty certain this is the exact same generic baby monitor in two different boxes for two different prices. Next one, I decided to go with a company that makes has been making wireless stuff for a while, VTech. This one is the VM350. And then the last one is by VTech as well. This one is the VM3252. Let's get to it. We're going to be checking battery life. Range is a big one. Features across the, all of them. I'll use them for a little while. I'll give you guys the pros and minuses, what I found out. All the baby monitors that I'm reviewing come with similar cameras. They have these little flat mounts that you can use a screw. You can connect them to a wall. They'll swivel, they'll pivot. Um, this one, the temperature sensor is external. The features that the VTech ones have that the other ones don't have is they have this on off switch where you can actually turn the camera off right here and leave it in place. I did a range test on all of these to see how far away I could get them. And I also did a battery exhaustion test on each one of these. When I did my battery exhaustion test, I set it up the same way for all of them. Full charged battery, I turned it on. I had them set up where the screen was on at its lowest setting. The audio was on at its lowest setting and I just ran them to exhaustion. All right, so the first one I'm gonna be going through here is the Laputa. It's got the audio display across the top here. These lights light up in progression from green to yellow to red, just letting you know how much noise is being detected by the camera. And the nice thing about this particular setup, when you turn off the screen, that display is still visible so that you can see how much noise is coming up there. If your kid is crying, Great feature for keeping in your bedroom or something like that. Feature that this one has that the VTEX do not have is the ability to turn the audio completely off. You'll see across the top there, you have the connection strength to the camera. You have the audio, which right now is on mute. Um, and then if you do it, the, the transmit, these all have the ability to talk through the camera. When you do that, it'll show you the microphone that it is talking right now. It also gives you the temperature, uh, number of cameras connected, which is this camera one in this case, because I only have one camera for it. And these are features that are similar between all these. So this one got five hours out of the battery. A lot of good features about this thing. I like the fact that it's got an audio display that you can see even when the screen's off. I like the fact that the audio display is very easy to spot even when this thing is far away. I do like the easy interface and it has a great screen. I don't like the fact that it gets interference. Now that might not happen in your house. I do have a several Wi-Fi routers set up in my house and uh, I got a 2.5 and a 5 uh, network. So there is some stuff flying around here. So I was getting interference on this one where when it was down in my regular room, I keep the camera set up right here. Right downstairs from this is where my family room is and it was dropping signal even there. Did not get any signal from this one whenever I was out in my home gym, which is a detached building. So really the negatives I have on this one are the range, which may or may not be a factor for you guys, and the fact that it drops signal, which is another thing that might just be an issue in my particular house. Next up is the VTech VM3252. Interface on this one is very similar to the other VTech, which I'll go into next. Over here, you've got the link. You've got the battery. Uh, this this turns on whenever this is plugged into a charger. The mute, which is interesting because they have this mute set up here, but you can only mute it by pressing the talk button. That's the only time this light comes on because the volume on this one is at the top and you can go all the way down in volume, but you can't actually turn the volume off on this one. And then of course the talk. So when you press this talk, you'll see that the talk light turns on and the mute light comes on. Okay, so the interface on this one, very straightforward. Um, you, you can use this to cycle the zoom in and out. And if you have more than one camera hooked to this, you can use this to cycle through your cameras. This also, when you press and hold, this one turns off your LCD. One of the things that I don't like about this, uh, which is similar to the other VTech, is that when the LCD is off, you have no visual cues on audio. It has a slightly different interface for the uh, video on, for the screen on. 
setup, you have to go over here to the crying baby and you turn this on and that basically means that when the screen is shut off, this will turn on whenever it senses sound. You set the level, you set the sensitivity of that. Uh, same thing, this one also has the temperature and an auto dim feature for the screen to save batteries. This one did not have any signal drop here within my house and almost a full signal when I took it all the way out to my home gym. So one of the key features I'm looking for range, this one's got it. Uh, it's got this stand which is adjustable, which I like. This is another feature that is also on the, uh, that is on both of the VTEX is the ability to set the, ang to set the angle of the display. The VTEX both have this in common, which the other baby monitors do not. It actually has access to the battery which can be replaced. And as we know, when it comes to rechargeable devices, it's always nice to be able to replace a battery in case it starts to lose its battery lifespan. Advertised online, this battery life is given as nine hours, which is compared to their bigger version, bigger screen, this one is advertised as four hours. So on this model, big plus battery life, but in my exhaustion test, I found that this one only ran for six and a half hours before shutting off. This one has the widest field of view of all of the cameras that I tested, which is nice for, I have this set up just on the edge of the crib and you would you can see a lot more of the actual crib items in the crib and then also the little human that would be in there than you can with the other cameras. Now, obviously this is not a deal breaker because you can just set the camera further back and get the same effect as you would for this field of view. But it is nice to have a wide field of view because you can place this close to your little human. I had an issue uh, with the audio sensor. The audio sensing on this is very, very sensitive. It picks up everything. Even with the door closed in the nursery, it still picks up noises outside, footsteps and stuff like that outside the room. The problem is the fact that for some reason, the sensor on this is always registering the loudest audio even though this is in a silent room right now with the door closed. The problem with that is one, it renders the audio display useless, and two, it makes it so that the feature to turn the, the screen off and have it kick back on whenever it hears noise for night use doesn't function at all on this device. Now, I thought it was a fluke, so I ordered another one. I got a replacement unit. The replacement unit did the exact same thing. Uh, I went through all the settings. I went online, saw if there was anything I could figure I could change. I couldn't get anything to work to fix that problem. Uh, there could be something, you know, hit me in the notes if there's something that I'm missing to pass on to other people who might want to use this one. Or if you have this unit and you've got it working correctly, uh, but I could not get it to configure correctly. I don't know if I got two bad units in a row, but I could not get this one to work, the audio to do anything except for detect full volume. I like the form factor. It's small, it's compact, which has its pros and its minuses. Good for travel. I love the range out of this one. Didn't have issues with drop signal and got a full signal when I had this one out in my home gym. Another thing that I liked about this one, it has the widest field of view of all the ones that I reviewed. It is a good feature for travel where you might be putting it in spots where you're more constrained by how far away you can put the camera. This one had great signal. It has great audio. The downside on this one is the fact that the glitch I was having where the audio was always detecting maximum sound, even though it was in a room that, were, that was quiet. So the features on this never really worked. Moving on to the biggest screen out of all the ones that I'm reviewing. This is the VTEC VM350. Similar features to the other VTEC, it does have an adjustable stand, so you can set this up at multiple angles. This one, obviously, out of all the units, has the biggest screen. Uh, the interface for this one is very similar to the other VTEC. On screen, it has your signal strength with your camera going to your camera. It has the number of cameras because you can hook this one up to multiple cameras, set it to cycle through as well. It also has a volume dis or a volume display that comes in here, similar to the other unit. It's just not showing up right now because it is a quiet room but it works the same way. Similar features as the other ones, this one does have the ability to turn off the screen and set it up to kick the screen on when it hears noise. Uh, it has the ability to monitor the temperature, which all of these ones have, your battery up there. You can talk through the camera as well if you wanna talk out, talk to your uh, little human through the camera. Microphone's right up there. This one also has a flip up antenna. It had pretty much full bars the entire time. Even when I took this out to my home gym, didn't have any signal drops. This one has the most intuitive menu out of all of them. And I think that's because it has the most space. So it actually tells you exactly what you're adjusting as you go through these menus, as opposed to the other ones where you're just looking at symbols. 
Both of these have the ability to set an alarm for temperature range. It'll set a high temperature or low temperature and this thing will alarm whenever it reaches one of those. You can play melodies or soothing sounds, white noise, birds, extent, things like that. This one also has a couple modes in here for the multi-camera use, which is to do a single camera, which it's on now because I only have the one patrol mode, which cycles through them or split mode, which splits them on the screen. It does have an auto dim feature as well, which allows you to just, it won't turn the screen off, but it will dim the screen after a certain amount of time of you not putting any, inputting anything. It'll just dim it down. You can still see what's going on there, but it just saves battery. It is advertised online as having four hours worth of battery. So I was thinking this one was going back because of the short battery life in the exhaustion tests that I ran, keeping this on the entire time, low setting with the volume on just like the other cameras. I got five and a half hours out of this battery. Just like the other VTEC unit, this one does have a replaceable battery. I do like the fact that it has a large screen. I didn't think that that was gonna be a big deal for me, but as I used each one of these, I realized that it was nice to be able to set this in the kitchen anywhere, and while working in the kitchen, be able, still be able to see my little girl without walking over and actually looking at the screen. Things I like about this one, love the big screen. Obviously, I love the range, because that's one of the big things I'm looking for to be able to use this in my home gym. And I like the clean interface on the menus. Very simple, very easy to understand what they are. You're not looking at symbols, you're actually looking at it spelling out exactly what the feature is. Things I don't like about this one, obviously the battery life isn't the greatest. I don't like the audio display is very small and not very easy to distinguish from the rest of the display because it is on the display. And this might sound like a weird one, but for me, one of the negatives is the size of the overall unit. Seems weird because it does have the biggest screen size, which I said that I liked, but it is very bulky for something that you would be using for travel to slip into a backpack or a bag or something like that. This is the Hello Baby. This one is about $100 as well. And this was the late entry. I got this one because I wanted to see if there was one out there that was a little bit more like an actual standard Mark One Mod O baby monitor. And um, I liked the aspect of the Laputa where it had this very easy visual audio lights on the top. So I got this one and I thought I would compare. The screen is very, very bright, very, very clear. It's got this little boost in 10 up here. And I will say as far as the signal goes, this one did compete. Um, it was actually uh, the second strongest signal out of this group. Features on this one are very similar. The layout is much different than the other ones. The arrow buttons, the directional buttons on this one are off to the side. And then the menu button and your back and mic and talk and all that stuff are on this other side of the screen. It does have a flip up back stand, does not have any adjustable positions, just has this one. It's either collapsed all the way in or it's out. In the battery exhaustion test that I ran on this one, this one only got about a little over five hours. This one is very, very bright. The lowest brightness setting on this one, which is what it's set up to right now, is still very, very bright. This one did not have any signal drop or issues with inside my house. And now, the moment of truth, which one did I pick? Well, in my shootout, the winner was the VTEC VM350. The reason why I went with this one overall was because despite its battery life not being the longest out of all of them, the big one was the range. Being able to have this in my home gym, the external building, and get no signal drop. I did have to flip up the antenna, so that's a tip for you guys. If you get this one, it does make a difference. But with the antenna flipped up, I could be in the far corner, have this thing set in the far corner of my gym, did not get any audio drop, did not get any signal loss. So for what I want to use this for overall, despite the bulkier size, as I had mentioned in the review, to me, it's still the winner. The Hello Baby does get honorable mention because it was very, very strong contender. So the Hello Baby, I would recommend at least giving it a try if you guys are comparing a couple of different baby monitors because I really do like the features of that. I like how simple it was to use and it did perform well. I'll show you guys a quick hack that I did right here. You get one of these little um, flexible tripod. All of these legs uh, flex, bend. They got these little grippy things on them. It has a full swivel, you know, ball style head. In order to be able to put my baby monitor camera in a lot more locations than you might be able to normally just with its basic with the basic stand that it comes with here. But you just put Velcro on the top of this, Velcro on the top of that. And then, uh, try and get this more in the middle. And then when you connect these two, you have yourself a quick makeshift tripod that allows you to angle this at, at uh, 
much more extreme angles than you could with just the dry stand itself. And also, as you see here, it allows you to put this, mount this pretty much anywhere. Bend this and manipulate this to clip this onto anything that you would like. Just a quick little hack there I thought I would show you guys because after I started using this camera for things like a, a bassinet, it doesn't have a flat surface next to it. You need a better way to actually mount this camera. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful and beneficial for you guys. Even though I picked this baby monitor, it doesn't mean the other ones aren't good. It just means they weren't the one for me. I hope this video was useful. If you have any more tips or any other information that would be helpful for parents and future parents, leave the information in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more Little Human Gear reviews.